Okay, recording. I have started the recording. So we will be doing position analysis and it means that we will try to find uh, the position of a mechanism given uh, the necessary values for the links. Let me give you an example for the four bar mechanism, the standard, our standard mechanism. Let's say that we have a four bar like this. Uh, this is the fixed link. So this is one, two, these are relevant joints, three and four. Um, let's say that the lengths of each things are e of each links are L1, L2, L3, and L4. L1, 2, L4 are let's say th this is known. Okay, Th these don't change. Uh, and uh, this is a we know that this is a one degree of freedom mechanism. So let's say that this angle is theta. Uh, given theta, let's say, uh, we want to find the position of any link uh, at at any time. Uh, that is for a value of theta, the values of uh, well, L2, L3, and L4, sorry, the, the positions of L2, so two, three, and four links uh, are determined. They might not be uniquely determined, but we can find all the possible value of these uh, things, of these, uh, let's say, links. Let's say that we assign a coordinate system to our mechanism so that, let's say, this is our capital X coordinate and this is our capital Y coordinate, okay? We want to find the positions of, um, well, let's say, let me put certain values. Let's say this is A0, this is A, this is B, and this is B0. Well, the positions of A0 and B0 are fixed, so they are clear. Uh, so we want to find uh, positions of A and B, let's say, for all values of theta. Alternatively, uh, given the value of theta, actually, you can easily find that the value of the position of A can be easily determined, but Alternatively, the angles, these angles, let's say, call it, I don't know, phi. Uh, and this angle, let's say, psi, let's say. Angles, let's say, phi, and this is an end, psi. For a given theta. Okay, so we want to find what is the position of our mechanism for a given angle so that uh, it is how, how the mechanism moves, how, what kind of positions uh, the mechanism assumes, uh, what kind of positions does the mechanism take. That is the problem we want to uh, solve. Let me uh, draw this four bar again. Four bar is a good test case. So uh, we will use it quite often. Um, as you see here, uh, this is, as you know, this is our the crank. Usually the crank 
so if we make a full rotation so that the position of the crank can take the following values okay supposing that this is a circle for each value of the crank let's say when it comes to this position but what kind of position does the mechanism take it will probably take some position like This will rotate like that. Let's say that it will take this position. It's not a very exact thing, but uh, the, the four bar will take the, the following position. When the crank rotates, when it comes to here, for example, it is going to be uh, something like that. Let's say. Then it will be here. So that the position of the mechanism will be here. Okay. And so on, as this thing rotates, as theta changes, let's say, um, from zero to 360 degrees, we want to find all possible positions of the mechanism. One thing you should note is that for a given value of theta, actually two solutions might be possible, okay? One solution might be, for example, um, might be this one. So for this value of theta, this is what you get. Um, these are the revolute joints, but then another solution might be possible. We, we will find those values too. Let me try to draw this here. The second solution, which is the cross solution, let's draw it in pink, let's say. The cross solution would be something like this. I'm just, you know, making it up, but for a given value, this is the second possible solution. So I can say that this is uh, solution one. This is cross, let's say, position. For the for a four bar, Two plus there, there might be two possible solutions for some other mechanisms. It, it might also be possible that you might have multiple, more than one solutions. We will try to find them too. For example, let me draw the uh, slider crank. For example, given the value of theta, uh, this might be a possible solution. Well, probably for a slider crank, this is the only solution. You know, and we will see that uh, the solutions are, uh, we will see them from the equations. Uh, so given theta and link lengths, Let's say L3. We want to find this distance. This is a variable X, and let's say um, well, one angle, let's say this angle, let's say it's to be five is the position analysis okay for the slider crank that's the possible um, that's what we want to do okay okay um, 
I guess this is more or less clear. Now, uh, before we go on with the analysis, this is important. We need a convention, a kind of convention. This is kind of arbitrary, but we will be using it all throughout the course. Uh, and it is important that we use this convention uh, for the, you know, angles, link lengths, and so on. For example, again, we take a four bar. Uh, The fixed uh, po points, we usually name them A0 and B0, as I have said. Uh, let's say oh, that should be an A. This point, a uh, rotating point, uh, a revolute joint is named A and B, okay? Now, uh, the link lengths, uh, for example, the fixed length, which is the, one link, okay. Uh, this has we call it the length of a zero b zero is a one, okay. Now the other links, their lengths are termed a two, a three, and a four. These are links two, three, and four, as you know. Okay. Um, the angles now, um, angles are termed thetas. Uh, we use thetas, but with subscripts. So we can use theta. Uh, well, if I use theta, I have to use other angles there. So I will use theta two, but even better is using theta one, two. But sometimes we use theta two for this. This means that this is the angle between the link one, which is the horizontal link, and the link two, okay, theta one, two. And this angle, for example, between link one and link three is called theta one, three. And the angles are always counterclockwise. Counter Let me, uh, hmm? two and three. Uh-huh. No, no, this is not the angle between two and three. Uh, the angle between two and three would be this one. Okay, this is the ground link is horizontal. Between horizontal and three is... Uh, uh, the angles are measured counterclockwise. Uh, and, uh, well, they don't have to be in radius, okay. Uh, but this is important that you have to measure them counterclockwise. Okay. For example, if you measure it here, the theta one four will not be this angle because this would be a clockwise measurement. Theta one four is the following angle. This is theta one four. Okay. Between one and four is called the theta one four angle. Is this clear? And also, it might be possible that you might, your links might have extensions like this one. Uh, let's say that there is a welding here, so that this position, uh, the link length is A3, but this link is extended a little bit. Uh, and then there is a position, link position P here. And we, we might want to find the position of link point P. Uh, usually these, uh, this distance between AP is termed, well, it does, it's not necessary, but C is the distance between A and P, okay, this distance. And we also need this angle. You can call it uh, any angle, but we call, we will call it gamma here, okay? So we use gamma uh, for, the angle between, uh, well, 
AB and AP. And it's a fixed angle. So our problem is uh, the following, given uh, A1, A2, A3, A4, uh, C, and gamma, okay, these are the values, fixed values, uh, find, um, Theta one three, theta one four, and position of P for all values, let's say, of the input theta one three. Theta one two will be our input. Well, I just assumed it to be our input. If it can be something else, but it's the standard again. You you change the value of theta one two, and by changing that, we want to find all the possible solutions for theta one three, theta one four, and position of this point P. What kind of uh, position? Uh, what kind of uh, position does this link trace? Uh, for example, it might be making a, um, I don't know, this for example can take a rotate, make a rotation like this for 360 degrees of rotation of theta one, two. What is that thing? Uh, you remember from the first class that uh, the the certain positions of mechanisms could go on straight lines and so on. So we want to find out what kind of positions are possible for for a specific point P. Okay, that's uh, we want to do. So how do we do it? Uh, that is our uh, problem. And I will start it with, uh, uh, as I said, um, four bar mechanism again. Um, so we will try to do it. Let me just start another screen and I'll draw another four bar. It's actually, I, I wish I could just copy it from there, but. So, uh, well, the fixed things are, as we know, are, uh, this is C, what was it? Uh, A1, A2, A3, A4, C, and gamma. The variables are, variables, and this thing are, Theta one two is a variable. Theta one two is a variable, and theta one four is a variable. Right? Um, so, and this one is our input. 
So we have the control over the change of this. Um, so we want to find, uh, given theta one, two, we want to find theta one, three on the position of point, let's say, um, P if possible. But how do we do it? Well, we do, we write the, the so-called vector uh, equations, vector loop closure equations. This is probably uh, what we will be doing all the time. And it is the following. We, we write the following vector equation. Let me draw it here. Here you have a a zero a vector. Okay. Uh, then you have a a b vector here. A zero a and a b. This vector, this position of b, can be also expressed as the following: a a zero b zero vector, and then b zero b vector. So that we can write, for example, vectorially as uh, a zero a as a vector plus a b is equal to a zero b zero plus b zero b. Okay. Now, uh, these vectors can now uh, be in the two dimensional coordinate system. If we have a coordinate system here, let's say that this is our X coordinate and this is our Y coordinate, okay? We can write it as follows, we'll write them as follows. For example, uh, um, the A0, A vector, is um, its length A2, right? Times um, uh, what do I use here? Is this clear for everyone? This, you know, I can write this vector, uh, resolve it into its X and Y components, uh, like here, this has a length of A2, this is theta one, two, so that its X component is uh, A2 cosine theta one, two, This y component is a2 sine theta one two. Okay, this should be clear for everyone. I guess that shouldn't be a problem. So a zero a is the following vector. Then we can write a b vector. A b vector is this one. Okay, uh, a b vector can be written as Oh, sorry, A, B is not like that, A, B. For example, A, three times uh, cosine theta one, three, I plus sine three, so. A, zero, B, zero is, is very simple, it is simply uh, A one I right uh, A one I and B zero B as a vector is equal to uh, A four times cosine theta one four I right plus sine theta one four I. Okay. 
Okay. If there is no question about it, then we can write all of these together uh, as follows. Uh, we will just, uh, well, substitute all of them into this equation, okay? Let's call it star. So let me go and substitute it there. A zero A was, uh, what was it? A Q cosine theta one two I. Um, yes, A two sine theta one two J. Plus A two cosine one two I plus A two sine theta one two J. Um, I sometimes forget this. Um, it's not very important, you know. Uh, I can you can just put an arrow on top of a vector, or put an underline when you write. It's just the same thing, but I use them. In, interchangeably a1 i plus a4 now it looks like just one equation but here actually we have two equations here because they are independent uh, i and j equations, okay? So we can equate i equations to each other and j equations to each other also. So the i terms will give us the following. A2 cosine theta one two plus A3 cosine theta one two is equal to A1 plus a4 cosine theta 1 4. And the j equations, j terms are is going to give us a2 sine theta 1 2 plus a3 uh, sine theta 1 2 is equal to a4 sine theta 1 4. Okay. So we have two equations uh, with two unknowns. Why two unknowns? Because theta one three is an unknown and theta one four is an unknown. Remember that theta one two is given. We want to solve it given theta one two. So Theta one three and theta one four seems to be uh, can be needs to be found, but there is a problem here. This is not a very simple equation, just as you know, uh, an algebraic equation with two unknowns. These are nonlinear equations, so you cannot really solve them just by taking the determinant and so on. So these equations are two, I should say nonlinear equations and the, their solution is not very obvious okay um, their solution is make obtaining a closed form solution is not very easy it is possible but it is not uh, you know um, it can be it cannot be done very quickly just as you solve linear equations linear equations are easy to solve you just use whatever you, you use linear algebra to solve for linear equations here for nonlinear equations you need a lot of tricks uh, to solve for that but it is possible actually we will solve the four bar uh, problem for four bar the solution is kind of easy but uh, for a mechanism with six links eight links etc those solutions might not be very easy to do okay in that case, in the general case, the only way to solve non-linear uh, mechanism position equations might be to use numerical techniques, numerical analysis. Okay, 
you cannot obtain analytical closed form solutions. Um, and then let's say once theta one three and theta one four are solved, we can solve for the position of P But how can we do that? It is kind of easy. Remember, let me go to the previous slide. Point P has another vector here, as you might uh, see here, which is this way. So that the position of P uh, which is this, let's say, a zero p. You can write the following uh, equation. Okay, which can be written as a zero a was uh, plus a p. Now let's try to find AP here. AP is, uh, it is C, as you see, is its length is C times its angle is theta one three plus gamma, isn't it? Theta one three is now known because we have solved, we assume that we have solved it. So I will just try to write it here in this remaining space. Uh, so C times uh, cosine theta one three plus gamma i plus sine theta one three plus gamma. Uh, sorry for this cumbersome writing, but there is very little space here. So uh, now everything is known here. Once you solve for theta one three and theta one four, all is known. Okay. Let me write it here. All is known. So that you can solve for the position of P. You understand? Okay, so that you can uh, find the position of P from uh, this equation because theta one two is known given, theta one three is solved. A gamma is given, C is given, etc. Nothing is unknown here. Okay, now in principle, uh, we can work with vectors like i, j, k here as we did in dynamics. But uh, since we are dealing with two dimensional mechanisms, there is a, a, a very convenient way of. Uh, working with vectors uh, in two dimensions. That is in the plane vectors. Uh, there is something uh, which is very, which might makes our task rather easier. And that is the complex number representation. 
instead of using vectors with i's and j's and you know unit vectors of i's and j's we will use complex numbers uh, in order to represent vectors uh, and it will make our equations more compact and well in a certain sense easier to manipulate okay so uh, the the thing we will do in this course from this point on we will be basically dealing with vectors represented with complex numbers so let me make a very brief introduction then we will take a break and then we will continue so the topic is the complex number representation representation of let's say vectors so we represent mechanisms with vectors in two dimensions and complex numbers are is an easier uh, way of compact way of doing it now let's say that you are in the plane so that you have an x coordinate and a y coordinate and you have a vector r Okay. This vector has a position uh, angle theta. Now we can, this R vector can be represented as we know by X times I plus Y times J, I and J being the unit vectors. Okay. Well, we know that actually this R X thing is simply uh the magnitude of r times cosine theta and y is r times sine theta and we can easily find that uh r is also equal to square root of x squared plus y squared nothing about complex numbers here yet but there is another way of doing this um uh, well this is the vector representation, or we can represent a vector by uh, the following x plus, we can say uh, as x plus i y is one way of representing it. X is this, you know, this is x, <coughs> x distance, this is y. You can write it as the x uh, and y this is a vector representation or even better we can write it as r times e to the i theta this is the polar polar representation which can be written as r times by euler's identity cosine theta plus i sine theta Okay, so e to the i theta is a uh, you know shorthand for cosine theta plus i sine theta. This is the. There are many ways to prove this. One is the, for example, series expansion of. Uh, And again, x is equal to r cosine theta, and y is equal to r sine theta, as you can guess here. And remember this that uh, in mathematics books, this is e to the i pi, for example, is given as uh, minus one, is given as a, you know, a very beautiful equation. It contains e, i, pi, and minus one here, uh, which is, this is correct by the way, but it is one of the nice things about mathematics that you can express things uh, so compactly. So the R vector therefore can be uh, written as 
r times e to the i theta. This is a vectorial representation uh, of a you, you know of a two-dimensional vector in terms of its uh, uh, magnitude. This is its magnitude. And e to the i theta is actually it gives you the direction. Somebody saying something, Mark Janakizu, are you saying something? Okay. So e to the i theta actually is the unit vector in this uh, direction. So let me just go here. This is e to the i theta, which is cosine theta plus i. So this is the, if this is theta, this is the unit vector in theta direction. So we can write therefore a vector as its magnitude times the unit vector in its direction. Okay. Any questions up to here? So we can represent vectors by complex numbers uh, as we see here. Let me take a break here. Let's take a break for about 10 minutes. I'll be back uh, about 9.40.